Spurgeon here with RevZilla, and today we are taking a look at the detailed breakdown for the G-Max FF49 helmet, available at RevZilla.com. So what we've seen with G-Max is they've changed the letter designation in front of a lot of their numbers, and the FF now stands for full face. So it's very easy to understand which helmet you're looking at by just looking at the letters in front of the number designation. So with the FF49, I almost called it the, uh, the full face 49 there for a second, this is gonna be one of the entry level helmets that we're seeing from G-Max. Thermoplastic construction, you are getting two shell sizes, and when we threw this on the scale, comes in at three pounds, two ounces. Now this is gonna be a DOT only helmet, and as far as the fitment is concerned, it is gonna be a little bit more on the neutral round side of things. So, if the noodle sitting on top of your shoulders has more of a round shape to it, you're gonna have a little bit shorter front to back, a little bit more room on the side of the head, and it will work very nicely for you. Now, if you wanna consider bumping up from the FF49 in G-Max's lineup, the next step up from this would be something like the FF88, which is gonna be one of the very first helmets we've seen from G-Max, which is gonna carry an ECE safety rating, and the FF88 is gonna give you more venting than something what we're seeing with the FF49. But depending on where your climate and where your budget falls, the FF49 is gonna be that nice entry level piece for you. Around the $85 price point for the solid colors, it's gonna come in around $90 if you want to bump up to a graphic. Like I said in the beginning, thermoplastic shell with this, there are going to be two different shell sizes, and the size breakdown for this, from extra small up to large, you're getting the first shell size, and then when you get up into extra large to 3XL, that's where you're going to bump up to the second shell size. So you can keep that in mind if you're somewhere between a medium or a large, you will bump up to the larger shell, if, or I'm sorry, between a large and an extra large, you will bump up to that larger shell if you have to get up into the extra large helmet. Now, starting with the front, kind of working our way through, you are gonna see three intake vents of this. You are gonna have the one vent at the chin, and it does actuate with a simple switch to help push airflow through. And then you do have dual chimney vents up top, and they're just slider vents, so they are active vents. And they almost push, they don't pull straight back, they almost have a pull out to the side, if you will. So if you're reaching up to your helmet, you wanna just kind of pull kind of away from you down towards the side of the helmet, and that'll actuate the vent open nicely for you. Now, when we come to the face shield, the one thing you'll note is that they actually did a nice job of giving you a breather vent that's more secure than the one we've seen with the FF88. So the breath guard on this is actually gonna work nicely. The airflow pushes through, and it does vent up. And then when we take a look at the face shield, this is gonna be the same face shield we're gonna see G-Max using on a lot of helmets. And the one thing of note here, it's not something you do with the helmet on your head, and you do need to use both of your paws. So what you're gonna wanna do, in the, with the visor completely open, the face shield completely open, you wanna take your index finger, and there's a little bit of a nub or a nipple right here. You just wanna push that down, and then once that's fully depressed, you can slide that arm out of the way, and the visor will just pop right off. Once you're done with that, you cleaned it, you swapped out to a different color, you pop that back into place, and you take that little arm, and you just slide it back up until again it catches on that little nub, and then you're set to go. So not hard to do, it's just gonna take a few more steps and you're gonna have to utilize both hands to do it. Once we close that up, spinning around, again, very simple helmet, clean lines to this. You get around to the back, you do have a little bit of this top wing with that overall channel cut out, and you're gonna have those three exhaust vents working around the back, the one exhaust vent and the two down below, just to help pull airflow through. Again, not quite as much air as you'd see with something like the FF88, but still a nice vent scheme from G-Max. When we get to the interior, pulling out one of the cheek pads, this is another update you get with the FF88. With this, it's a simple sweat wicking cheek pad, still has a nice contour to it, but it's not that spa soft design you would see with something like the FF88. So this is really where you bump down to the $85 price point when you're looking at the FF49. So when you're considering you know, which features are important to you, this is the stuff that you can see that it's gonna help you make your decision for whether or not it's worth it for you if you wanna bump up. You will still get the speaker pockets with this. So if you wanna install a comm system, you're not gonna have cutaways in the actual helmet EPS itself, but you are gonna have these little pockets that are worked into the, uh, the cheek pads, you can see where you just slide the speaker right in there and it would sit in there so you can listen to music, talk on the phone, if you were to install a comm system on this particular helmet. Now, go ahead, we'll pull the rest of this out. You can see the two cheek pads pop out nicely and then you do have the interior liner is gonna pop out very simply as well. And one of the things that G-Max does 
even on uh, their, their more affordable entry-level helmets, is they don't use snaps along the forehead to mount the interior liner. They use a brow, a brow mount, and the reason this is important is you don't have those snaps pushing against your forehead when you're out there riding, and there's still a nice contoured feel to the overall liner itself. It's just not gonna have that spa soft technology worked into it. Now, as we slide this down for you, one of the things you'll notice is that G-Max does a nice job of giving you those full contour or those full cutaway channels to help that airflow push through. So even when we're talking about a helmet like the FF49 that doesn't have quite the venting scheme that we've seen with like the FF88, you're still getting those nice channel cutaways into this single density EPS to help push that airflow through from the front all the way to the back. And you can see those channels do a nice job of going all the way down to the back of the actual shell itself. So for those of you out there that are looking for a nice, affordable entry-level helmet, or maybe just a second helmet for the passenger, the FF49 is gonna be one that's not going to break the bank for you. And there's a lot of riders out there that are using G-Max. And if you wanna hear more about what they have to say, click the info button on your desktop or mobile device to read other rider reviews from folks that are out there using G-Max helmets on their rides. If you have more questions for us, never hesitate to pick up the phone, give one of our gear geeks a call at 877-792-9455, or simply, Type us out an email, cs at revzilla.com. Thank you for joining us for this look at the G-Max FF49. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.